Today we're going to talk about my favorite monsters, which which are the best monsters, and they're the yokai from Japan. Uh, my wife Jilly, who sits in the corner, she travels with me to Japan, and we look for monsters, and we found a few. Some of them we bring home as toys, and some of them we bring home as books. So after I finish the talk, everyone can come up and look at these toys and books because this is the history that we've collected. You can have a play with them afterwards. Just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a writer, which means I get paid to sit down and to read books and to write. And that is my job. I love monsters, as you can see from these toys, and also love robots. You can see me on the left with a giant robot. If you go to Tokyo, you can see a 20 meter tall robot and they will not let you ride inside it, even if you ask. <laughs> and there is me and my wife, Jilly, and we're in the big park with a big, he looks like a big chicken, but it's a big statue. He's called the Tower of the Sun, and his eyes light up and shoot out into the night. <laughs> I'm a writer, so I work from home, and this is my office that I have. Um, I'm a, I'm a grown-up, <laughs> but I, I haven't always been. So this is what I look at while I work. And having around the toys, um, you can see there's even teddy bears, but also I have my books and video games. When you have your favorite things around you, it reminds you what you like and it helps you to think, right? If you If you sit down and lay out, if you've got your Legos or your toys, or even if you just look at your books, it helps you think because you think about the things that you like and how you enjoy them. And that's why I'm such a successful professional. <laughs> this is a, this is me on travels to search for monsters and friends in Japan. Uh, if you look at the top, that is me with the Gundam robots. And there I am with our baseball team the Hanshin Tigers in Osaka. My good friend Kumamon is in the bottom corner there. Kumamon is a friendly bear. And then, do you know the red man? Yeah. Yeah, who is he? He's the cookie time monster. <laughs> so he comes from here, from Aotearoa, New Zealand. But if you go to Harajuku in Tokyo, they like him too, because he's such a good monster. Another person who likes mascots is the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern. You can see her with the two kiwi fruit, uh, green and gold. They're, they're brothers who work together to deliver vitamins to people. So liking monsters and mascot is just one of the ways I am like the Prime Minister of New Zealand. <laughs> this <clears throat> Now growing up, this is the very first yokai I had ever seen. I was playing a video game, a very old one called Super Mario Brothers. And I didn't know what was happening, but if Mario gets a special power up, he can turn into a, a tanuki. A tanuki, as we'll see later, is a type of animal and his superpowers, he can turn into a statue. And ever since I saw this cool guy with his spiky ears and big tail and superpowers, I knew that I would be interested in yokai. We'll start by looking at some of the older yokai. Uh, yokai have been in Japan for years and years, hundreds of years, thousands of years. They're very old. And even though we have lots of new yokai, this is where they come from. This is their origins. This is a famous parade of all of the monsters for a yokai, and it's called the Night Parade of 100 Demons. And they call it 100 because that's just a really big number it's to say, wow, there's even 100 monsters. And they come out on a special night and walk down the streets of the town and have a big parade, like the Santa Parade, but with much more monsters. <laughs> One of the most famous old yokai 
who is still around today and who almost every Japanese person will know, all the kids will know about this one. He's called the Kappa. The Kappa is green and he looks a bit like a turtle, but with a beak on him. And he can stand up and he has a dish on his head. There's some special things about Kappa. They're not mean, but they're not always nice. If you look in the top left, they like to wrestle. And Kappa have a very strong, uh, and will challenge you to wrestling if you meet them. So you always have to be polite and bow at them, and they'll leave you alone. Other things we can see is that the Kappa has a favorite food, and it's green to match his skin. It's the cucumber. And this is so well known that <clears throat> in Japan, they call a cucumber sushi a kappa maki because it's for the monster. And this is just anyone who has a cucumber sushi, they're like, mm, let me get that cup of food. <laughs> when we went to Japan last time, me and my wife, we went to on a yokai hunt and we went to a place called Kapabashi, which is a whole town dedicated to the kappa monster. And they love the kappa and kappabashi. You can see here that the pavement has a kappa on it. And there are street flags with a kappa. Shops carve their own kappa. That's a very charming wooden kappa in the middle. People will leave a favorite food for the, for the mom and dad kappa. And then in that top right corner, you can see an old building. That's a special shrine for where the kappa had visited. It's very important to, <coughs> the kappa is very important to Kapabashi because they helped build the town. And everyone knows that story that a man was trying to build a can canal. He had to dig in the river a lot. And at night, the kappa would come and help him. So everyone shows their appreciation. Another old yokai that we can still see today is the tanuki. That's like the Super Mario that I showed you right at the start. The thing about the tanuki is, tanuki is an animal that you can see at the zoo. That's him there. See, he kind of looks like a dog, kind of looks like a raccoon. He's sometimes called the raccoon dog, which is very accurate, but maybe not that imaginative. <laughs> Remember that Super Mario could turn into a statue. One of the ways that we see the tanuki when we walk around in the world is that he's a statue that people put outside. People put out a tanuki statue because he's thought to be good luck. He will bring business to, to shops. And it works because every time I see a tanuki, I walk up to the shop and have a look at it. <laughs> This is the first scary yokai. Sorry if it's too scary. And Oni is a very bad yokai. He's large and he carries a club and is very angry. Luckily though, we have the hero Momotaro on the left. Momotaro. He was a young boy who was born inside of a peach. And he had special powers. So he took his friend Monkey, who you can see in the statue, and his friend the Dog, and his friend the Pheasant. And they traveled to fight the Red and the Blue Oni. And they won. Oni have an important lesson for us, which is if a person, a human being, if they are mean and never do nice things, you can turn into an Oni. You can become a bad man forever. <laughs> These are other yokai that you can find out in the world. And yokai go everywhere. We've seen that yokai can be the animals, like the tanuki. Or they can be the kappa, who everyone loves. Or they can be the bad oni. Here we can see you can be a jandal and also be a yokai. The way that the jandal becomes a yokai is... If, if your shoes get a hole in them and you don't repair them, and if you don't look after your things, 
if you don't, oh, I don't know, pick up your shoes when you come in the house, it will spring to life <laughs> and let you know that you've been bad and that you should take care of your things. That's what the lamp is down the bottom corner as well. You see, he's a bit spooky, he's maybe a bit angry on the left and maybe a bit crazy on the right. If you have a paper lantern and it gets a tear in it and you don't repair it, it will become very upset with you. So you must look after your things. It's very important to look after the things, especially things that cover your feet and keep you safe, things that give you light because they help you. So you help them back. And then in the top is just two monsters beating up one other monster. <laughs> These object monsters, the things from around the house, we call them skumogami. Skumogami. And that's, that can be a lot of different things. Almost anything can become a yokai. We have a flashlight. Maybe his batteries have run out on the torch. And that's why he's upset. And we have the guitar. He's missing strings. You have to have all the strings on your guitar. Otherwise, he'll become upset at you. And we have a teapot. You have to clean inside the teapot. You can't just keep making tea. <laughs> so those are lots of the old yokai. And you can see all of their pictures on all of the scrolls through the library today. If you walk on this floor and then you go downstairs and go downstairs again, so many pictures of your guy to look at at the library today. Having looked at the old yokai, we can see more fun yokai. Yokai that we know that we can see in the world, cartoons, video games, and toys. Sometimes I get paid to write about these things, video games and toys and books. So it's good to have a knowledge of them because it can become a career. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> do parents, do, do kids, do they love the Pokemon? Kids, do you love the Pokemon? Say yes, say yes, yes. Everyone on Zoom, that was a very resounding yes. Pokemon, the pocket monster, a pocket yokai, a yokai that you can carry around. Pokemon is a game of collecting as many monsters as you can. You find out about the monsters, and then you fight the monsters, and then you take them home. Do not fight monsters. <laughs> the man who came up with the video game Pokemon, he, he invented it. He's the guy who thought... I've thought of Pokemon. <laughs> His name is Satoshi Tajiri. And the way that he came up with the idea for the game is when he was a boy and he was out in the country, he would carry a net with him and catch insects. This is still popular with lots of kids in Japan is you go, go outside and you swing a net around and you might catch bugs or butterflies and then you look at them or take care of them. And a lot of the times you let them go afterwards so they can go about the world. But you go around the wilderness and nature and try to catch monsters. And we can see that some of the insects look a bit like monsters. Look at that one down the bottom there. It's much bigger than a hand. It's not a dangerous insect, but he looks very strong. I think he would have good hit points in Pokemon. <laughs> I'm going to go through some of the Pokemon, and you will know a lot of them because they're quite famous. But then I'll tell you about the Japanese yokai that they are like, or that they are based on. So if we start with Pikachu, who we saw a hundred of before, he's a bit like the Kodama Nezumi, which is an exploding mouse. <laughs> if you are out in the forest, sometimes you will see it. A special mouse and he could be magical and if you give him a fright he will blow up <laughs> just like pikachu to send his shocks out so be nice to mice <laughs> <laughs> now 
Next to Pikachu there is his bigger brother or evolution. His name is Raichu. And he is based on a type of lightning monster. We can see him down there. He looks a bit like a tanuki, a bit like a raccoon, a bit like a badger, but he carries with him lightning and he can attract lightning from nature. So those are two mouse type Pokemons. Do you guys know Eevee? Yeah, everyone likes Eevee, eh? It's one of my favorites because there's so many different types of Eevee. Because when Eevee grows up or evolves, it can become Espeon. That's one of the things that Eevee can grow into. And Espeon, we can see, has the cat ears and a little jewel in the head, but look at the tail. It splits off into two. And being a cat and having two tails, that lets us know it's like the old yokai, the nekomata. Nekomata. Nekomata is a cat, but it can come from a normal cat just living in the world. If once it reaches a certain age or if a cat has special knowledge, it can grow a second tail and become clever and wear a very nice scarf on its head <laughs> and still play with string. We have the two fox type Pokemon here. Children, do you know Fulpix? Yeah. yeah, nice one, eh? So fuzzy. But Fulpix and Ninetales, that name's a bit of a giveaway. They have nine tails each. And that's how we know it is like the old yokai, the kitsune. The kitsune, that just means fox in the Japanese language. But when we talk about yokai, the kitsune have special powers and they can transform into different things. So like the way that Pokemon evolve, the old nine tails can turn into a person or it can change into other yokai and disguise itself. They're quite tricky. On the left, we have Fennekin, which is another fox type. And a Fennec fox is not a yokai, but I have met one before. <laughs> so this is a very good chance for me to show photos of myself. <laughs> it's really cute though, the Fennec fox. It's a fox, but it's only about yay big. And it's really cute. And this is a photo in Japan as well. It is not in Egypt. <laughs> That is just a wallpaper in Japan. Yeah. yeah. I think people have probably seen both of these pictures before, right? We know Meowth. And when we go to shops or maybe a restaurant, we see the other one. So Meowth, the Pokemon on the left, see how he has the coin on his head? That's an old, that's an ancient looking coin, but it's made out of gold. And he's got his hand up. And then on the right, we see these all the time here in Auckland, don't we? Or in other countries. His name is Maneki Neko. And he also has a big coin and is waving at people because <coughs> he says, come give me money. Come give me money. That's a sentiment that we can all grow with. <laughs> but I like these because it, you always see Mouth and you always see this guy. And now that you know that they have a connection to each other. Another, what, what Pokemon type is Growlithe? I really don't know. Fire type. Thank you for that. <laughs> Growlithe, he has stripes like a tiger, but kind of looks like a dog. And that's why he resembles the lion dog or the Koma Inu. This is just a drawing of a Koma Inu, but you can see photos of them because they're statues that appear outside of the shrines in Japan. Not all of them, but lots, and even most. Right at the gates, they will have these dogs, these lion dogs, these koma inu, who are divine creatures who watch you as you enter to keep you safe, and they guard um, the goodness that is in the, in the temple. So they make sure that the goodness is there when you visit. 
Woo, we're going through these Pokemon. So many Pokemon. Okay. Remember, a hundred yokai. I'm not going to do them all. <laughs> but if we look again, uh, Lombre, who is a newer one, see how he's green and he has a big dish on his head? That's how we know he's like the kappa. Because the kappa has a dish on its head and that's where its superpowers come from. He keeps special water inside of it, which make him strong. And maybe you can see the picture, but there's only one good way to fight a kappa. You have to fart at it. <laughs> oh, this is a crazy one. Licky Tongue, who's a big pink licky monster. He's named up, he's made up after the Akaname, who is a yokai that also has a big tongue but he goes around and licks up dirt everywhere, which is kind of nice because he kind of cleans it up, but you don't want to be the guy who has that for a job. <laughs> this is Whiskash. Have you seen a Whiskash on your Pokemon or Pokemon Go? He's quite a big, powerful, very powerful Pokemon. And you can see he's a fish, but he has whiskers. And that's how we know he's like Onamazu, or Namazu. He, in the old Japan stories, old stories from Japan, the big catfish lives underneath or in the earth and causes earthquakes because he's so powerful. You can see that he's so strong. Everyone in the town has, has to come out to beat him up to say, hey, stop shaking the earth. Zigzagoon, who is a tanuki type, he is based on the Tanuki, or being a Tanuki type. And I think this is the last one. This is a very powerful yokai, a very special spirit in Japan. Tornadus, who we see floats on a cloud, and he has a big ring going around him, and he's got big green arms. He is like Fujin. Fujin is very important because he has the powers over the wind. He carries the wind. Can you see this big? It looks like a sheet. But what it is, is a sack that has all of the wind in it. And when Fujin's ready to go, he turns to the side and he lets up the storms on one side of the sack. So that was about as many Pokemon as I could do without getting very tired. <laughs> Did you like the Pokemon? Yeah. Do you think you will go back and watch or play Pokemon and remember, that's like the Tanuki. Or remember what that crazy man said? <laughs> I had a great time. So remember Yokai when you play with pocket monsters. Another nice, fun place to find a Yokai and monsters, but usually nice ones, is in cartoons or anime. Anime is the Japanese word for cartoons, and it is enjoyed by many. My favorite place to see these anime is in movies by Studio Ghibli, which is a famous Japanese cartoon maker. If we remember our parade of the 100 demons, where all of the yokai come out at night down the city street, we can have a little look at this clip here. We saw in the video that the yokai were coming into our world and they have their parade. All of the hundreds of yokai come through into where we live. But then there's another movie called Spirited Away and that's the different way around. It's a girl who goes to the world of the yokai. So everyone there is a yokai and she is strange because she's a person. So we looked at the old yokai, and then the connections between the Pokemon and the old yokai. And then we saw some cartoons. This is a video game called Yokai Watch, which is another game like Pokemon. But Yokai Watch is interesting because it's about, again, it's about going around in the world and finding yokai where they are. And when you look for yokai in the Yokai Watch video game, you find yokai in alleyways or under bridges or at the edge of town. 
It's always, it's near your house, but not really inside of it. It's at the edge of things. Do people know about how the troll lives under the bridge? That's a European story about the big troll who lives underneath. But just like the yokai, he's at the bridge, which is between one place and another, between your town and the outside. And that's where yokai like to stay and why they're a bit mysterious because you can't, they're never always around us, but they're never very far away. So if they're on the other side of the bridge, they can come over at night and have their parade. And then when the sun comes up, let's get you out <laughs> and you get over that bridge. This is the fun part. This is my favorite bit. That's all of the, that's some of the cartoons and some of the video games where you can see Yorkai. You saw the photos of when me and my wife, Julie, would go to Japan to try and find monsters. And I tried to bring back as many as possible. So I bought these toys to show you today. And once I finish talking, please come up and have a look. And you can play with the toys and have a look at them. And I also bought some books that you can go through as well. So please, once the talk is finished, come up and have a look, have a play and say hello. My favorite yokai toys are big and scary ones. In the middle, we have a picture of Hedora. Hedora, he is a monster made out of smoke and smog and pollution. Whenever yucky things go into the earth, it might be slimes or chemicals or bad pollution, it makes a monster because we haven't taken care of the earth. We have to take care of our things. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Lucky we have help from another yokai, Gojira or Godzilla. Godzilla comes from the earth like the catfish. Remember the big powerful catfish? Yeah. And sometimes, he, as long as we're good to him, he can help us out because Godzilla also knows that you shouldn't make the planet dirty should take good care of it. And then over there, it's hard to tell, but it's a very big monster. It's a man, an ancient soldier in big armor. His name is Daimajin. And I have two toys here of Daimajin. He's almost as big as Godzilla. But Daimajin comes out because some men have been greedy and they've been mining the earth and not being nice to the people who do the work in the mines. So when someone is working hard, always be nice to them. Otherwise, Daimajin will beat you up. <laughs> There's lots of other figures like that as well. Uh, I have a very special Super Mario Bowser Godzilla that you can come up and see and lots of other toys and then I also have some stickers and books that you can look at this is one of my favorites Bikuri Man and I'm going to walk up in front of this one um, this is cool because look at all of the different yokai that are in there if you look up in the top left that's a vampire but he's done as a Japanese cartoon style He's about halfway between good and bad. I think it's the time of the day. Generally pretty good when he's asleep. Next to him is Kappa. And you can see that Kappa likes to swim because he's wearing a snorkel and some goggles. But always here, new yokai and new pictures of yokai are always being made all the time. So now that you know a little about bit about the old yokai and new yokai, you can look out for them in the world and in your life. Thank you.